all three of these tanks have Syrah in them from a, an area formerly known as Lonnie's Vineyards. Really? Yes. <laughs> How do you spell it? As same as yours, L-A-N-I. <laughs> Late November, so all the leaves have changed on the grape vineyards, and their building is over there. And here is our space for the night, right in the winery. This is Reno, and he is employed here at M2 Wineries. This since July, you said. Yes. Very good. July. Very good. Okay. Could you explain a few wines for me? Well, we have two white varieties that are available: the Vermentino, which is an Italian white grape, and we have a Vignet, which is a French white grape. Both of these are outsourced, not grown on the. Or the Vermentino is grown on the property. The Vignet is not. But they're all local wines. On down from there, we have a rosé, and then all your reds start. You have Barbera, a Zinfandel Local, a Purple Squirrel Cab, a Susi Vineyards, 103-year-old vines, Clock Stoppers, which is a blend, a Trio, which is a blend of three. Caught you there, right? <laughs> Duality, which, as you know, again, is a blend of two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> and then a Rocha Petite Syrah. Um, yeah, these are all the same. Uh, we do have a Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon from, from Napa. And then we have food, which is meats, cheeses, crackers, chocolates, and jams. Very good. All for your... How is the uh, Squirrel Cabernet? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I'm a Cabernet lover. Yeah, you will not be... Dis I, I will hold to my heart that you will not be disappointed. Okay, with that sounds good. That's when I want a glass of that. Great. What sounds do you want, nice. Ernie? Just ice water if you have it. Got it, or any and then, water and, and then you wanted some food. Okay, we'll have uh, the goat, an 
Napoli and the wheat rounds. Sounds great. Okay. Goat Napoli, wheat rounds, purple squirrel, and an ice water. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. So Lane Montgomery is the winemaker owner here. Lane started off of Turner Road in a warehouse building and now he's evolved into this uh, facility here. We're gonna take you on a little tour through into the uh, storage case area, the barrel room, and then the tank room. Excellent, thank you. It's evolved into some more storage out here of, of wines. And this is the barrel room. The barrel room. So, how old are the oldest of these barrels? The oldest barrels, usually between seven and eight years. Okay. And then we discard them. Okay. So, Correct. <laughs> and or whiskey makers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, breweries like to use them for beer. Okay. I thought it was Portuguese. Toraldigo, so, you're talking about. This is a 2020 Toraldigo. Custom crust for a gentleman here that did all the metal, aluminum, welding fabrication in the next room that you see. Larry brought in some tonnage, we crushed it for him, and then he brought in the next day some tonnage for us to crush to make wine for our support for you. Very good. Yeah. This is normally called your tank room, your crush room, your processing room. As you can see, all the tanks, most of now are empty because we're, we barreled almost everything. Tank number two still has Chardonnay in it. It's sitting at 37 degrees. All three of these tanks have Syrah in them from a, an area formerly known as Lonnie's Vineyards. Really? Yes. <laughs> how do you spell it? It's the same as yours, L-A-N-I. <laughs> so how, how appropriate is that? And where is that located? It's in Amador County. In the oh. foothills just east of here. I'm, I'm sure you know. I that. have to go there someday. It's very, it's I wonder very if, beautiful. I wonder if they're a harvest host. I, well, they're going to have to be like you in. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's our wine press, which presses the grapes. Get that last bit of juice out of them. This is our elevator or receiver, which receives the grapes, pushes them up the ladder, and into a machine on the other side that we'll get around to. It's called the de-stemmer. Take the grape from the stem. So like if you eat table grapes and there's just that, that whole cluster stem left right. over, it's exactly what comes out of there. Fabulous, yeah. okay. That elevator will position the receiving end of the elevator just outside this doorway. Up the elevator, it'll drop into the distemmer, which is a machine back there. Out of the bottom of the distemmer, a pump receives that juice, pushes it into the press, and then the press has a, 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 a float, 
uh, bin in the bottom that catches all the juice and it pumps into the tank. Once we're done with that, then we, we take all the, all the stems and everything goes into the tank. We don't press it until later. So it's a, it's a flowing process. Uh, Chardonnay or Vermentino, your white, uh -huh. is pressed the day you crush it, the day uh -huh. you pick it. Uh -huh. The red, you let all the seeds and everything sit in the tank and then you empty the tank, take all the juice, put it into another tank, then press all the remaining pumice, put it in the same tank you just did the juice. And that what's my, that's what makes the red. And that's what gives it that red because you let it you let it ferment in the tank, skins, seeds, everything. And that gives it the tannins and all the body. And then, it's, and then you process it and remove as, all the juice you can in the, in the, in the, out of the press. There's your process. Very good. Fires? Did so you have fires we here? Did, well, not locally here. They were all around us. From the Napa area on north and up in the Sierra Nevada foothill areas, a lot of fires, a lot of smoke in here. Because we're in a central valley, the smoke blanketed us. The sun had an orange red heat to it all day long, and I mean, it's sometimes pink. Uh, smoke quality was unhealthy for you to be outside work. One time we couldn't have grape pickers come and pick our grapes because it was unhealthy conditions for them, which in turn made us concerned uh, and be aware of, is the grape being tainted with smoke internally? Uh, the only way to know that is to take a sample of the crushed grape, send it off to the processor. They told us 10 day wait period. 10 day wait period, what do you do? You've already crushed or you haven't crushed, maybe you just did a sampling. And you're gonna wait 10 days and the grape's gonna be too late to pick. So we rolled the dice. Ran a tracker up and down the vineyard, down the rows, sprayed water, rinse off as much as we could. We picked, crushed, tanked it, got our test back 10 days later. It was an immeasurable amount of smoke that was, that was it affected in this area. So we did the right thing. Uh, we've heard some grape growers and, and winemakers chose not to receive grapes of certain varieties during that time period. So don't know if that was a great call or not. But uh, it's a decision you have to make in trying times. In the Napa area, the area where the smoke, where the fires were closer to it, I think they were more affected, obviously, by fire, but also was there damage to their grapes. Right. I'm unaware of, but I've heard the results are obviously different. Smoke, but for us, luckily, we were unaffected by the smoke being a damage to the wine, to the grape. Good. We got lucky, yeah. Good. All right. issue with this uh, M2 winery is that the railroad tracks are just on the property line and the trains come about every two hours night and day so you come and stay as a harvest host member bring your earplugs Sun is setting today on our first time with a harvest host at the M2 Winery in Lodi. What did you think about that video? Wasn't that very interesting? And the wine here was great. I had a swirly Cabernet and it was delicious. One of the most uh, flavorful Cabernets I've ever had. No tannic and it was very good. I recommend this winery for anyone to come and stay here as a harvest host. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, make a comment, share, and subscribe, and stay crafty, even at a winery. And the sun is setting on M2 Winery in Lodi, California.